27 August 2020 and today I want to take you through a presentation that was done by Professor Jonathan Moyo last night to the crisis coalition in Zimbabwe Zoom, does a Zoom call with quite a number of people but I want to summarize for you what Professor Jonathan Moyo says and why this is important is after you listen to what he said you will understand what Nelson Chamisa means when he says he wants a political settlement. So I'm going to quickly read through this and then I'll conclude. So the first thing that Professor Jonathan Moore said was that the crisis in Zimbabwe does not involve everyone. The people who are quarreling are Mnangagwa, Chiwenga, S.B. Moyo, Valerio Svanda, Chimonyo, and Chamisa, and then the people. The overarching argument that Moyo gave during his presentation was that the, present, uh, the presidential votes of the MDC alliance were stolen in 2018 and the parliamentary votes were stolen in 2020. So there is now a crisis and that crisis needs to be mediated. Then the first point that I'm going to look at here is that the constitution has been suspended in Zimbabwe, the Concord, ZEC, the Supreme Court, and the Constitutional Court have been used by Mnangagwa to make Zimbabwe a de facto military state. Then he looked at the centers of power in Zimbabwe. These are the people that are quarreling. Mnangagwa, who controls Zimbabwe through General Thomas Moyo of military intelligence, Owen Mudangube, Matanga and his deputy Mutamba of ZRP and he controls Forex through Kudata Gurei and Mtuli Ngube. The second center of power is General Chwenga who has influence in the Zimbabwe Defense Forces through General Chimonyo but has lost influence because he was out of Zimbabwe for a long time when he was sick. His friends or people that are in his camp include Obed Mpofu Patrick Chinamasa, Tendai Sawanu, Jim Kunaka, Godfrey Senengamu, and Clevaria Chizema. These people are linked to General Chwenga, and they're working with some people in the MDC alliance who are on the run. For example, Job Scala. Number four, so the fourth center of power is General S.B. Moyo. He has his own presidential ambitions and was responsible for determining the 2018th presidential elections through AFRICOM. He is the de facto prime minister of the army. Number five, General Valerio Svanda. He is the ZDF commander, but has little influence because of his ZAPU background and has little connections in ZANU PF. Then we have the junior soldiers. Junior soldiers have different have a different view to that of the generals. So the junior soldiers have got their own view of what needs to happen in Zimbabwe. Then the last is Nelson Chamisa, who is number six. He won the elections in 2018, and Jonathan Moyo says there is evidence that Nelson Chamisa won the elections in 2018. Now, he presented seven scenarios of what could happen in Zimbabwe and I'm going to quickly run through those scenarios. Scenario one, Mnangaba will manage to maintain the status quo and this would be an authoritarian order. So he has to do this through force. Scenario two, Chiwenga's people want to see a GNU with Chamisa similar to the one that happened in 2008 and this will require a constitutional arrangement. So some Constitutional changes will have to be met. Scenario three, S.B. Moy wants an NTA. He's working with some people who do not have strong roots in ZANU PF and MDC, and therefore this is unlikely to emerge. Scenario four, there could possibly be a military transition led by disgruntled junior military officials, sorry, military, military, junior soldiers, which is increasingly becoming likely so this is the junior soldiers just 
being disgruntled and doing their own thing. Scenario five, a spontaneous revolution led by the public could happen and this could have a high likelihood of violence as there's no clear leadership. Scenario six, there could be a restoration of constitutionalism because there's evidence in the sex servers that show that Nelson Chamisa won the election. So it will just be a matter of restoring Chamisa to his rightful position. Scenario seven, this is a negotiated settlement between the parties that are quarreling. So we're looking at the parties number one to party number six. And I want to say at this point, Nelson Chamisa has been talking a lot about a political settlement. And when he's talking about a political settlement, Moyo says a political settlement means demilitarizing state institution, institutions. And this means that the military will no longer have a role to play in Zimbabwe. The military are the problem in Zimbabwe. So they need to go, they need to leave the roadblocks where they are standing. They need to leave key state institutions where they are, they are in. They need to leave the position that they've taken in government and the positions that they've taken within ZANU-PF at the ZANU-PF head office. So, a negotiated settlement, it would be a discussion between ZANU-PF, ZDF, and MDC Alliance. That's what he says. The purpose of the negotiation, as I said, would be to demilitarize the state. Then, he says there is no Zimbabwean that can mediate the dispute because of the situation is such that everyone in Zimbabwe is compromised or is taken aside. The AU, the SADC and South Africa are compromised because they supported the coup, so they cannot uh, mediate this dispute. So the only mediator of this dispute is the United Nations. Then when it comes to the NTA, he says the NTA won't be acceptable because it lacks political representations. So it won't be supported by politicians. Now let's go to the possible mediator. He says Paul Kagame, Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, is likely or is the best possible mediator who is being talked about. I think during the week, Gideon Gono said the same thing. Now let's look at the sticking points. The generals are concerned about security issues which need to be negotiated. China and other foreign powers, what they think do not matter. Not all SADC countries accept that there's a crisis in Zimbabwe. Then he gave reasons of why the United Nations should be involved in Zimbabwe. Chuenga Moyo, uh, these people that are from the military, so they, can be, can, they cannot negotiate with civilians. Mnangagwa has formed a ferret team that is abducting citizens. Zimbabwe is now a threat to regional stability. Mnangagwa is likely to accept a fact-finding mission from the United Nations. Then, before I, I end here, I want to show you what Moyo said about the coup. He said the coup that happened in 2017, it arose because Mnangagwa and Chuenga made a pact after the 2008 elections and Mugabe made the mistake of appointing Mnangagwa as a defense minister. So, in my conclusion, Jonathan Moyo is definitely pushing for a negotiated settlement. He's pushing for Chamisa to be sitting around the table with Mnangagwa and the army. And to me, it looks like Jonathan Moyo does not take responsibility for his part during Mugabe's days. He does not see what Mugabe did wrong to bring about this situation. And it also seems to me like Jonathan Moyo thinks the United Nations can just come and intervene in Zimbabwe when there's no fighting. I do not think that is possible. And I also think that Moyo has ignored Poland. You cannot say we want to negotiate and yet there's another negotiation going and then you don't even consider it in all your discussions. There must be some way to consider Poland because it's already going on. What if Chamisa was to accept Poland? Would Mnangaba accept Chamisa into Poland? Because he's already invited him. So he literally has to walk to, to Poland and attend. And that is one thing that I didn't see in this discussion. Then there were other panelists who said AU and SADC are key to the dispute. And another panelist says there's already been two special rapporteurs 
from the United Nations who came to Zimbabwe. One came last year, and they says there was once a GNU in 2009, right after the 2008 elections, and the MDC became silent about key issues during the time they were in the GNU. So this is a summary of what transpired during that discussion, Moyo pushing for a negotiated settlement. And I hope that we now have a clear understanding of what Nelson Jamisa means when he says he wants a political settlement. He wants the military to go back to the bases and he wants to be included in a new kind of government that will be negotiated between ZANU-PF, the military, and the MDC alliance. Right, thank you very much for watching. If you want to watch this full interview or full presentation on Zoom, please go to the Crisis Coalition Facebook page. You'll find it there. Thank you very much for watching. If you're watching this on WhatsApp, send it to as many people as possible. If you're watching this on YouTube and Facebook, please like, comment, and share.